Hey everybody, Manisha here and welcome back to the channel. A few weeks ago, we participated in the GMTK Jam 2021. If you're not familiar with this jam, it's hosted by the Game Makers Toolkit YouTube channel and Mark Brown himself. This is one of the biggest game jams out there, so of course we had to take part. Some friends and I had been planning to participate in this jam for a while and we were really excited to see what we could make in 48 hours. Let me quickly introduce the team. First up, we have the artist Vic. She's actually a professional pixel artist at an indie game studio, which is super cool. And it would be her first time game jamming. Next up, we have the composer Oather, who worked on a previous game jam with us. He's really, really talented, and I knew for sure we wanted him on board again. My friend Flo, who did the writing for that same previous game jam, would be joining for a new role as a level designer. Last but not least, we have John, who would be also joining as a level designer, and it would be his first time game jamming. I feel like at this point, I'm just recruiting everyone I know to start doing game jams. I would be doing all the programming and the assembling in Unity. I also took on the sound design because it's one of my favorite parts. Finally, the weekend jam was about to start and the theme was reviewed. The theme was joined together. So we hopped on a call and started brainstorming. We had a ton of great ideas and we knew that rope physics would be popular, so we stayed away from that. Also, I kind of didn't want to program rope physics. We had a really neat dandelion buddy idea, but the physics would be very floaty and unreliable, so we stayed away from that as well. We finally came to this idea of fusions and inverting gravity. We sort of referenced this game called VVVV. And it's just a puzzle platformer game, and it kind of had similar controls to what we wanted. Vic sketched up some quick concept art, and it seemed like a good idea, so we decided to get started. We may have spent too much time on this, but in a larger team, understandably, it can take a little bit longer. So over here on my programming side, I set up a basic 2D Unity project. I sort of did a platformer at my last game jam, but it was very minimalistic, but I could work with the same movement script and just tweak it up the way I want. This was usually done by changing the jump force or the speed. I also started programming the fusion mechanic. This was how our theme of join together would be applied. So I wanted to make sure it was smoothly implemented. A collision between the two characters did the trick. Since they both fused into one character, my idea here was to just disable the pink one and leave the blue one to move on with its transformations and animations. I was also keen to do room transitions, similar to the ones you see in Celeste. Luckily, Ben Bonk had a really easy tutorial to follow, so I just installed Cinemachine and had that done in no time. The gravity flipping may have been the part that I was most nervous about. It's a mechanic that I see pretty often, but messing with gravity somehow seems unsettling. So the gravity inverting can only happen when you're a fused character. That means we had to keep track of what state the character was at. Were they an individual one or a fused one? After this was programmed, I could also use it for stars that were also available only when you're fused. And when you get the star, the gate to the next room opens. It's a very room level based puzzle platformer game. And the last thing I implemented was a way to die and restart the game. Meanwhile, Vic was pumping out a lot of different artwork. She worked on the two cute aliens, a space background, and a lot of juicy, squishy animations. She had a lot of creative control for the visuals in this game, so we usually left her to it, but she would ask for our opinions here and there on Discord. The fusion animation was really cute, and overall she just did a great job on the art. You can really tell she's a professional just by looking at these time lapses. Google Drive to share the artwork, and so I would usually just grab it from there and import it into Unity. Animations were really interesting this time around. It was my first time using sprite sheets and working with the sprite editor, and I had a really interesting time messing around with pivot points. I learned a lot in terms of animations from Vic, who had experience with the stuff at work. Changing the pivot point for these sprites would make sure that her animations didn't look too wonky. For this little blue character, we had to make sure that his pivot point was a little bit lower so that his idle animation looked good. And here's where it goes wrong. The flipping of the fuse character caused it to get stuck in the walls. 
That's because I forgot that the pivot point affects how it flips. So when we do a vertical flip, it uses the pivot point as the axes. Sadly, this was a bug that I didn't notice until we had the actual sprites in, so it was a little bit too late at that point. After putting the background in, the game was finally coming together, but it was a little too static for my taste, and nothing does the job like particle effects. And as if I had nothing more important to do, I decided I wanted to get this atmosphere right. I really love the wavy water effect Blackthorn Prod does in his games. And I was hoping I could achieve something like that. And of course he had a tutorial teaching us how to do that. So I grabbed the shader, followed the instructions, and in my opinion, it was looking a bit more livelier. I know it's a water shader, but I wanted to experiment and see if I could still pull off that space environment feel. Other than that, just more animations and state machine work. All right, this state machine is getting borderline messy, but I think we could still deal with it. For level design, we had John and Flo working on some paper sketches of the levels. They came up with some neat ways to incorporate puzzles where they must join together and then use gravity flipping to get the star. It was also awesome that we didn't need to handhold the player during the game or even have a tutorial level. And that's one of my favorite ways to onboard. Each of the beginning rooms would teach you something small so that you can learn about the mechanics. And then finally you would be able to use them to solve the puzzles. Flo and John also came up with a second type of fusion, but unfortunately we didn't get to implement this. So once Vic finished the tile set, I was able to start putting that in. And this was actually my first time using a tile set. For some reason I never really bothered learning about tile sets, but now I see that it's super handy in making quick levels and painting platforms anywhere you'd like. So I tried my best to mimic the level design that I was given from the sketches, but this was actually harder than I thought. When you actually have the control over the character, sometimes the initial design doesn't work with the actual implementation. So I definitely found myself improvising and sometimes taking over level design. It would have been great if we had our level designers actually using Unity and building those levels themselves. It gives them a chance to playtest and figure out what platforms work, what damage areas work, and what puzzles work. So I think me taking over that level design aspect was a bit unfair for them in their roles. But that's definitely a note for next time. As for music, Oather came up with two stunning tracks, one for the main menu and one for gameplay. The main menu track was so good and I was so sad that it would only be played for a little bit on a game jam game. So of course we gotta let it shine for a bit here. I wasn't too happy with how the main menu looked, but as a game jam game, it always gets a pass. The gameplay music that he made was basically a light version of the main menu, and it was a really chill melody which made it seem not very repetitive, which is great for these puzzle platformer type of games. I created the sound effects using a software called BFXR. I started using this in my last game jam, and it's super easy to just randomize a sound and tweak it to your liking. I did this for the jump, the fusion, and getting the star sounds, as well as some others. In the end, we were super satisfied with how the game came out. We had our share of bugs, but it happens. In my personal opinion, I think I might have taken too much on my plate. I could have killed a few tasks that I just enjoyed doing, and maybe even having another programmer would have been helpful. I found the animation tasks a bit time consuming for myself, and of course we could have definitely handed off the level design to someone working in Unity. A week later we received the results and we actually got 974th out of almost 6,000 entries which is pretty awesome. We also received a lot of ratings and comments, which is very much appreciated. And overall, people really loved the atmosphere and the presentation of the game. Of course, we also received a lot of comments about the bugs, specifically the flipping issue that was getting stuck in the walls. And I think that was just an oversight on my part. We also completely forgot about doing checkpoints. And I think this is a major hit because restarting from the beginning can be very frustrating. Personally, 48 hour game jams are a challenge for me, as I'm sure it is for everyone. This was my second GMTK jam, and this one went a lot better than last year's one, where I didn't even submit something playable. And I'm excited to be back next year, better and more confident. If we do get to post jam changes, some things that I want to do is add local co-op, fix gravity bugs, clean up and add more levels, and add more art and animation. And I really hope that we do get to clean up this game. Hope you all had fun during the game jam and enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time.